Today on our 2016 Lincoln MKX, we're going to be taking a look at the T1 vehicle wiring harness, part number 118682. So here's what our wiring is going to look like fully installed. It's going to be tucked up behind our bumper and it is going to stay on the outside of the vehicle at all times. Now it does have this dust cap right here, which is nice and convenient because we can just hook it right to our hitch, close the cap, and now our wiring is ready whenever we want to hook up our trailer. With our wiring kit, we're not going to have to cut into any of our wires. They're going to provide us with some T connectors that are going to plug right in place, but it is a little bit involved. We may have to loosen or partially remove our fascia. Let's go ahead and show you how we get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to come to the back hatch. And we're going to be removing our tail lights. And we're going to have a small plastic clip here. Just take a flathead screwdriver and pop it out. Now I'm going to be using a T25 to remove this fastener to get our tail light off. Now you want to be careful when removing your tail light not to break any of the clips that are holding it in place. Just want to give it a rocking motion and pulling towards the rear of the vehicle at the same time and it should release it. To make it a little bit easier to access, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our tail light right now and we're gonna set it inside our car for safekeeping. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. If we come to our rear wheel wells, we're gonna see six push pin fasteners. Now we're gonna remove these, so we're gonna have a little bit of flex on our fascia, and that way we can get the wires behind there. Now we just take a flathead screwdriver, and we're gonna pop the center section out, which will take the tension off the clip, and then we can pry out the bottom section just like that. I'm going to repeat the same process for both sides of our vehicle. Now we're gently going to start pulling away with this plastic trim piece around the wheel well here. These some clips holding it in place. Now if we look right behind here, right before the seam where our fascia meets our fender, there's going to be a screw right here. Now I'm going to be using a T20 Torx bit to remove that screw. Now we're going to remove that screw on the other side as well. Now very carefully, we're going to start over at our seam here where our fascia meets our fender and we're going to grab the edge of it and we're just going to gently pull away so that the clips will unlock. And we're going to work our way towards the center of the vehicle. That way we have enough room to fish our wires down and run everything we need to. Now I'm just going to take an old piece of airline tubing and you can use pretty much whatever you have laying around, whatever it's just going to keep its shape. But I'm going to take my airline tube and I'm going to feed it down through the bumper and have it come out the bottom. And this is where pulling our fascia away is going to give us a lot more room and we'll be able to see what we're doing. So my airline came out right underneath my bumper here. I'm going to take the yellow end of our T-connector here and I'm going to tape it to the end of my airline tube and then I'm going to pull it back up. I'm going to go ahead and untape our connector here from our airline tube. Now we're going to take the T-connector and we're going to match up the ends and we're going to plug into our existing factory harness. We're going to leave this one alone for right now. We're going to push our fascia back into place, making sure that it clips. That way, when we go to our passenger side, we know that it's not going to fully come off. We're going to route our green T connector here over to the passenger side. Now, I just want to mention, everybody's going to route this a little bit differently. You just want to make sure you stay away from any heat sources like the exhaust or any moving parts. So if you give me a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and run this, and I'll show you how I got it over there. The way I ran my wire is I just went over my exhaust and I zip tied that green wire to my hitch going all the way across and then coming over to the passenger side and I zip tied it to the exhaust hanger to keep it up. Now I'm going to run that airline tube back down to the other side and we're going to do the same method we had on the driver's side pulling this back up. We're just going to plug in the corresponding connector to our factory harness here. And 
And again, we're just gonna leave this alone for right now. Now in our kit, it comes with double-sided foam sticky tape. Now I'm gonna take my tape, I'm gonna put it on the back of my control box right here. Now this plastic panel on the driver's side, I'm actually gonna reach on the inside and I'm gonna mount this box to the inside of our panel, making sure it's away from our exhaust and also gonna help keep our green wire tucked up away from it as well. And whenever you find a suitable location for your control box, you're gonna to wanna to push firmly against it, making sure that double-sided tape is gonna make good contact and it's not gonna fall off. We're gonna to need to find a suitable spot for our ground. Take one of the self-tapping screws provided in the kit and I attach it to the frame. You should have our four pole flat and a black wire left coming out from underneath our driver's side bumper. Now we're gonna take the charge wire that's provided in our kit and one of the buck connectors and we're gonna connect it to our black wire right here. Now since this is on the outside of the vehicle, our kit comes with a yellow buck connector right here, but I'm gonna be replacing it with a heat shrink buck connector and you can pick up these on our website using part number DW05745-5. And these are just gonna give us a little bit more protection against any kind of corrosion and moisture getting inside of our connection and corroding our wires. I'm gonna strip back one end of my charge wire here. I'm gonna go ahead and crimp on my yellow heat shrink buck connector. I'm gonna take the other end, and I'm gonna crimp it on to this black wire here. I'm gonna be using a heat gun to shrink down my heat shrink right here on my connector. Now you can use any heat source. Just do want to mention, if you're gonna be using an open flame such as a lighter or a torch, you wanna to be extra careful not to burn your wires or char your connector. In order for us to get our wire from underneath our vehicle up to the battery, we're gonna be using a piece of airline tube again. I'm gonna feed it down. And once we have the airline tube all the way down, we're gonna go back underneath the vehicle. Now we're gonna to need to run this wire all the way to the front of our vehicle and come up to our battery. Now everybody is gonna run this differently. Again, just wanna make sure you stay away from heat sources like your exhaust or any moving parts like your axles or anything else. So give me a few minutes and I'll show you how I ran this. So I ran my charge wire. I went over the rear suspension, the rear axle here. I came down, ran along to get the fuel tank, came across to this cover here, ran my way underneath the cover, finally coming out right here, right by my red airline that I just ran down. Put a little tape so we don't lose our wire when we go back up top to pull it through. pull it back through. Now we have plenty of wire and we're gonna to need to run it to a positive post of our battery terminal here. So I'm gonna trim off some of the XX wire. Now before we connect this to our battery, we're gonna to wanna to put in the included inline fuse holder. So we're gonna take our fuse holder, we're gonna cut the wire in half. And we're gonna strip both ends of this wire. Now on one end of our wire, we're gonna take one of our buck connectors. And since this is under the hood, you can either use the one provided in the kit or you can use the heat shrink one. But since it's not exposed to so many elements, it's gonna use the one they provide in our kit. I'm gonna crimp that down. On the other end of our fuse holder, we're gonna take the provided ring terminal and crimp that on. We're gonna strip back the end of our black wire that we ran. And now we're gonna take that end and we're gonna attach it to our buck connector. 
We'll be using a 10 millimeter socket to loosen the post on our positive side of our battery. Now our nut on our battery here doesn't want to come off. I'm going to take my ring terminal here and I'm going to cut a small notch in it. Just like that. That way, even though the nut won't come off, I'm going to take my ring terminal and I can slide it over my nut and then I can tighten everything back up. I don't have to worry about damaging the threads or getting this bolt all the way loose. Finally, we can put in the 15 amp fuse that is provided with the kit. Now's a good time. We can go ahead and plug our taillights back in place. We can go ahead and reinstall them. I'm going to repeat the same process on the passenger side as well. We can put our hardware back into our fascia, put the panels back into place, and replace all our push fasteners on both sides. With everything ran and everything in place, I'm just gonna go back, double check all my wires, put a few zip ties in place, and just clean everything up. One final step is we're gonna test our wiring hearts to make sure that all our lights will work properly. Now here I have a four pole flat tester and if you don't have one you can pick one up on our website using part number I26. Now with an extra set of hands I'm going to have them run into the fr front of our car and have them run our lights for us. So here we can see we have our running lights on as well as the left turn signal, the right turn signal, our brakes, and finally our brakes and our left turn signal and right turn signal. Now that we know everything's working properly, we're ready to hook up our trailer and hit the road. And that'll finish up the look at the T1 vehicle wiring harness, part number 118682 on our 2016 Lincoln MKX.